I'm going to show you how to draw an eight head figure. Uh, the human proportions, the average human proportions are usually between uh, what we say is seven and a half to eight heads. Um, now people vary, some people are shorter, some people are taller, some people have longer arms, uh, you know, there's some variation in the proportions, but more or less people are seven and a half to eight heads high. And we measure the proportions of bodies by heads, which I'm going to show you about. Now, before you start your composition, you need to know that you need to decide on your piece of paper where you want to put your figure. Um, with costume design, you usually leave an area up at the top or somewhere where you want to place a title. Uh, you may have an area where you want to add some information as far as the character name or uh, what scene they're in or what act. Um, so you want to kind of choose how big your figure is going to be. Uh, this is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And I've decided that my figure is gonna be this, uh, the, the head is gonna be here, and the feet are gonna end right here. So that leaves me some room to put swatches, to put titles, to put um, act and scene and name of the character. Now I'm cheating a little bit because I already know that this is eight inches. But what you wanna do is start from that line and the, uh, from one line to the board, one mark to the other, and draw yourself a straight line. Now I'm drawing dark with this pencil, and the reason being is I want you to uh, see what I'm doing. So um, we have this line here. What you want to do is go ahead and put another mark halfway down between these two points. So if I, I know that this is eight inches, so I know my next mark, my midway mark, is going to be here. Then we want to divide this mark in half and also this mark or a section. So I know that I can go to number two here and four, the number six will be inch, will be my halfway mark. But we still need to make this into eight sections. So we're going to divide these points again in half. So again, I'm going to put another mark here another mark here, another mark here, another mark here. Now I know that these are one inch, but depending on your piece of paper, it may be greater than one, one inch or smaller, or where, where, however tall your figure is going to be. Now we have these points here, and for sake of learning, we're going to go ahead and uh, make some horizontal lines here on each one of those points. Now, we should have eight spaces, which means those are eight heads, or, you know, that type of thing. And not heads, but it's going to be a body. All right. I am going to do this top point as well. And just something to help you. So, this is going to be a head space right there. Number two head space three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, that's how we measure the body, um, you know, as far as when you were drawing it. So we're going to say this is one, this is two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we know that these are head spaces, so we can obviously go ahead and draw in our head right at the top. Okay. The neck usually only goes down about a quarter of a head. So if we know this is a, a, um, a whole head, we're just going to kind of uh, do some little lines on the side, coming out the side of the, the oval that you did for the head. Just about a quarter of a head. Now the shoulders are commonly about a head and a half uh, apart. So a head and a half is going to be an inch and a half. An inch and a half on this is going to be about um, inch and three quarter, uh, three quarter inches on either side. So we know that the shoulders are going to be about that far. 
Um, so we're going to go ahead and draw some sloping lines coming down the body again, a little further down on the head, that represent our shoulders. Okay. Now we know that the line, the bottom of line number two, the head, the bottom of the head number two, is where the nipples are of the body. And so we can just kind of show those nipples by, you know, it's kind of following the neck and just do a few little dots to represent the nipples on the body. We also know that the bottom of the three head is where our waist or our belly button's at. So I'm kind of darkening that just as reference points. And we also know that the bottom of the forehead is where our crotch area is. So we've got some identifying um, areas. So if we know the bottom of the three head is the waist, the waist is usually about as wide as the uh, um, one head. So we can go ahead and put marks there and that indicates how um, our waistline. You know, some people have smaller waist, wider waist, that's something you can adjust later. So at, right here at the shoulders, I'm going to put a circle, not too big, that represents that arm joint. Actually, I'm going to go a little bigger. And we can take uh, from, that, from that line that is the, the shoulder, we can go ahead and angle a line to that circle. Looks like something's off on mine because one side's a little, maybe this one's not far out enough. I, I, I misplaced this, but anyway, you've got it. Then we're going to find our hips are going to be kind of in line with our shoulders. So I'm just going to do some little marks here that let me know about my hips. Um, looks like I'm a little hippie there, but that's okay. I'm going to take that, connect that line from the waist out to the hips. Okay. Now, um, our knees. Uh, usually, you know, coming in or be just above that sixth line. So we say it's at that sixth line that our knees are going to be. Our thighs are going to be a larger area at the top of the thigh, coming down to a smaller area at the knee. I guess I need to make my knees bigger, small. Okay. Same thing on the other side. Okay. Now, uh, when you get to the, the ankles, it's going to be about half a head up. So you're going to kind of do a smaller circle for the ankle, just as a reference point. And um, knowing that the calf muscle sticks out a little bit more on the outside and just has, is a little defined on the inside. Um, but you'll, you'll get more on, as you study the body, you'll understand more about um, the muscle structure. And then you can do some little trapezoid type of um, drawing here for the feet. So there you have an eight head high figure. Now we've got to give it some arms too. So we know that the elbows usually come to about the waist. So we can put a little circle there um, to represent the elbow joint. We know that the wrist comes at about the forehead, the bottom of the forehead mark. So we can put a little something there to represent that. And then the hand, it will come between the five or a little bit lower, wherever, but it's always under the hip. So you can kind of connect the outside of the circle to the other outside of the circle. And same thing on the inside. And then you're going to connect this uh, elbow point to the wrist point. And then you're gonna do, I call it a crab claw. You just kind of uh, make a little uh, thing that looks like a crab. <laughs> and that'll be your hand, that'll represent your hand. You go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Again, I'm not worried too much about how beautiful my lines are, because that's something I can go back and fix. Now the face, um, you can go ahead and that head face, you can divide that face in half and um, put some, you know, dots for eyes there. Yes, it comes halfway down. You know, just kind of scribble something in. Uh, if I divide this bottom of the face in half, guess what's there? The nose. And if I divide this other place in half, we have the lips. 
Let's make her smile here. All right, and then of course this top here would be reserved for hair. Whatever kind of hair you want to put on this person. So when you get to this point, um, you can go ahead and perfect your figure. So, okay, maybe the arms look a little thin to me, so I'm going to widen the arms maybe. Uh, maybe take in, tr trim her in a little bit, even on the hips. Um, it's kind of hard to do this when you have such dark lines. Or, of course, you could use your handy-dandy eraser. Um, but you can see that we just simply made a, a quick figure. Um, let me show you now um, what happens when you don't use so much pressure with your pencil. Uh, this is another figure that I just did, uh, that I did earlier. And notice that, the, um, that it's very light, very lightly drawn. And that's on purpose because now I can go back and perfect um, the figure. I can perfect whatever I think is wrong with it. I can give it better muscle. Um, I can, you know, even maybe do something different with the hand if I don't feel like giving it the crab claw, claw and I want to give it real actual fingers. Uh, you know, uh, you can just keep doing, you can perfect it. And these little lines and marks that you made, you can, you can see all my head points. They will basically just disappear. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do some more of that really quickly. The more you do this, the better you get, and the better um, you'll understand the proportions of the figure, and it'll help you with um, drawing um, just freehand, even with, not with uh, doing the uh, little dots. But, you know, if I want to do some breasts, I'll go right under those, those nipple points and do some breasts. Um, I could go to the other side. But you already see how I'm perfecting the, the, the drawing. And of course, you know, you can take time with it and really make it nice. So if you start with a light hand, uh, that'll actually give you um, some room to re rework things. If you start too dark uh, with the lines, sorry about the dogs, um, sometimes it's hard to erase the dark pencil marks. Okay. And of course the face also. Um, we can still do that little. You know, I'm even just going to do shadows here. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the trouble of making that fine detail. Uh, because this is kind of small. You know, and who knows what kind of hair they have. They have some long hair. Uh, and you can do this for the guy. Now, the difference is in the male and the female figure. Uh, the male figure is a little bit more boxy, like, the, you know, I don't have her shoulders even, so I'm going to kind of figure, you know, I can go back and erase. I can go back and fix it. You know, I think her, her she's a little boxy, so I can kind of even out her proportions. A guy is going to have broader shoulders. Women are going to have uh, bigger hips. Um, the guys are going to have uh, a longer uh, legs. Women often have a longer torso. Uh, the, so um, as you go studying the difference between the male and the female figure, you can adapt that to your drawing. Um, you can also adapt this for figures that are more voluptuous, uh, rupinesque as I like to call them. Uh, you know, you just kind of have to widen areas. Uh, if it's a, a thinner figure, well, you bring it in. You bring your lines in. Uh, obviously, you're dealing with um, different types of people when you're drawing, especially for the theater. Okay, so, um, and so there are the two. Hopefully, I have them in the right place and you're seeing those two. Um, again, I want you to go ahead and try this. Um, and the reason we want you to do this is so that you can develop what we call a stock figure. Um, you, this is the first step before you start drawing um, figures that have action or movement to them. You know, they'll, they'll look a little more fluid or active. Um, but this is the beginning. Uh, to begin with, um, what you can do is once you have your figure perfected here, uh, notice that we're not even noticing much of those other lines that, that I have behind there. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and darken some of the stuff. I know this is, seems extreme. 
but you're going to see why in a minute. Oh, she kind of looks bald. I'm going to give her some hair. Okay. Um, the reason I'm darkening is it so that you can use this figure to uh, draw other figures, and, you know, put clothes on them, and continue um, to work on designs rather than worrying about what your figure looks like. I would tell you that you have to have two stock figures, one a male and one a female. You know, so something like that. What's nice about this is that now I can take this figure, um, that's not the pretty leg, but you can make it pretty, and I can actually put another piece of paper over it, and I'm hoping that you can see this because I can. I can see my figure, so I can go ahead and take my pencil and lightly draw this figure out and then um, not worry about putting details in because I'm going to start drawing clothes over this. It's not going to be a naked figure forever. Uh, so I can actually trace this out fairly quickly. And I can do this over and over and over again so that I can, um, again, render designs a little more quickly. Um, again, I'm not going to put in a lot of time into this. I just want to get a general um, idea of where my figure is supposed to be. And I can go back and perfect that. Now that I have that out, I have a light, very light drawing. And I can begin now to put some clothes on this uh, person. And maybe I don't have to. Um, you know, I don't have to worry about how perfect it is. Because now, again, I'm uh, beginning to clothe the person. So who cares what, what the body looks like? Now, if there is a part of the body exposed, you want to take more care um, to what that looks like. Um, but if this person has pants on, you know, it's going to um, come out more. And so that's the beginning of it. You know, you so, but you've got your, your figure. Let me show you some other ways that you can uh, use this. For example, this is uh, drawing paper. This is a, a drawing pad uh, that you use. And you'll notice that you can also put this under that paper. Uh, I hope that you can see that. Um, I can see it. Trust me, you can do it. Uh, however, if you're trying to use the stock figure underneath uh, like watercolor paper, it's going to be a little harder. Let me show you. This is watercolor paper. I can't hardly see that. I can't see that figure. So what you can do is take it to a window where there's some light, or this is a little light board that I have that I can turn on and... Um, all of a sudden, you see my the figure. Again, you have to know what size figure you need for whatever size paper you have. But I can, again, go ahead. This is watercolor paper, which is much thicker. And I can see that figure and, and start, again, doing my design 